Here's a problem where we have a crate inside a train, and the train is going to decelerate over some distance. We want to know how short that distance can be so that the crate doesn't slide along the floor of the train. This is the kind of problem that's kind of hard to solve using free body diagrams, because an accelerating train is an example of a non-inertial reference frame, where if we try to draw a free body diagram of the block, then there's like an imaginary, fictitious force pushing on the block in the other direction as the terrain slows down. So I'm not going to bother with free body diagrams for this problem, but I am still going to try and use Newton's second law, which states that the net force acting on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration, which can also be written as acceleration, where the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. This is the version of the formula that I'm going to be looking at, because even though a free body diagram of forces isn't going to be super easy to work with, we can still think of this pretty easily in terms of accelerations. We still have a block, and there's still a floor, and we want the frictional force here to be constant. So instead of thinking about different forces acting on the block, we can still think of it in terms of the acceleration that the block is going to experience needs to, at the very least, be perfectly countered by the acceleration that would have been experienced by the frictional force. So let's say that the variable A represents the train's acceleration. This acceleration must be no greater than the acceleration that we would find by taking Newton's second law on the frictional force. So that's the static friction. And conveniently for us, this problem is simple enough where the frictional force is the only horizontal force that's relevant here. So the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction, in this case static friction, times the normal force on the block, which, again, if there are no other uh, forces in the vertical direction, that's just going to be equal to its weight, mg, divided by the mass. But look, the masses cancel out. So the acceleration is really just equal to the coefficient of static friction times g, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So now that we have a formula for the acceleration, let's use that to find a formula for the distance that it can travel with that acceleration, assuming that the acceleration is constant. This means we'll have to pull out our old kinematics equations. I'm going to go with this one, the v squared equation because this is the equation that has all the variables that we'll need to use and the one we want to find. In this case, the train starts out in motion and then ends at rest. So the final velocity is going to be zero. And we can solve for delta x as being equal to the initial velocity squared, negative, divided by two times the acceleration. Plugging in our earlier formula that we found for acceleration, this is equal to the negative v naught squared divided by 2 times the coefficient of static friction and g. This is the final formula that we'll need to use, though since the problem asks for a shortest distance and not a displacement, uh, this negative sign is kind of not important to us for the sake of this problem, so I'll just put absolute value signs over that and call it a day. We don't need to worry about whether the distance is positive or negative, at least not in this case. The last thing we want to do is convert the speed, which is given to us as 50 kilometers per hour, into meters per second. So I just take the speed in kilometers per hour and multiply it by this, by this uh, conversion factor right here. 1,000 meters over 3,600 seconds. And then you'll find the speed in meters per second. Anyways, so we take all that and plug it into our formula, and you'll find a distance of about 39 meters. So this is the shortest distance over which the train can begin decelerating if we want to avoid the crate from sliding on the floor of the car. That is all for this problem. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you out. And if you have any requests for future videos to do, then again leave a comment. Alternatively, I have a Discord server linked in the description down below. You can join and ask any question you want and I'll see if I can answer it on this channel. But that's all for today and I hope you have a good night. Bye-bye.